next episode to go into production was Anthony Skeen's second script, Play in Three Acts, which went through a title change to One, Two and Three, before finally becoming A, B and C. Work started during mid-February of 1967, as Catherine Kath, who was cast as the flamboyant party hostess Engadine, now remembers. The director was going to be a uh, Michael Truman. Unfortunately, he had a nervous breakdown, so they asked for Patrick uh, Jackson. And then uh, we made it, and it was very pleasant, and Patrick uh, Jackson was very pleasant too. And anyway, this uh, episode was very pleasant to make. It was beautifully produced by Patrick Magoon. And uh, there was no restriction whatsoever. It was a very rich one, very, very good. Patrick made a very good job of that. The main theme of ABC is the manipulation of number six's dreams using a wonder drug which has been developed by a village doctor, number 14, played by Sheila Allen, who vividly recalls her first encounter with Patty McGoon on the set of The Prisoner. I'll never forget, I walked in, uh, as, as I was saying, I walked into the studio, um, there was McGoon, he says, oh, Sheila Allen, what have you done to your hair? You look like one of the Marx brothers, what's that fringe about? I, I, <laughs> it never occurred to me that my fringe might be a problem with lighting, because I had my hair which tends to grow forward anyway, in a fringe. And he never stopped teasing me about it. But um, that was it. That was what you were dealing with. You know, he was the star. He was the leading man. It was his show. So he was entitled to voice his opinions. I felt very much that the character that I was playing actually liked McGowan and thought this was it this was wrong, all this was wrong, but this was the job, you know, so it was that kind of double thing, you know, sort of unconscious flirtation with him, although I was supposed to be on the other side. Mm. And um, that wasn't difficult at all, because mm. he's a very attractive man. I do remember doing the uh, injection sequence, which was very exciting. It was extraordinary. I've never done anything like that. And um, all of us, I mean, Pat, it's wonderful. He virtually went to sleep. He said, right, that's it. Um, you lot get on with it. And uh, the director was extremely helpful about this. I had to set up a rhythm. I can't remember which one we did first. I think we did the shot that's on the screen first. And of course, I couldn't look at that while I was doing the real acting bit of it. But I sort of had to take my own rhythmic counting. And then when we, when the camera turned on to doing it for real, um, I had to sort of get that rhythm in it. And I remember that being a very, very exciting time. Um, a lot of extraordinary concentration coming from everywhere. It, it was really a really nice feeling that, mm -hmm. that the couple of days that we did that in. Catherine Kath also has fond memories of working with Patrick McGoon on this episode. And Pat always thought I was talking too much. <laughs> you talk too much, Catherine, you talk too much. Because I always treat him as a joke, you see. I always joke about him. Because Pat uh, was not smiling very often. He, he had so much work, you know, between the production and the acting and to look after everything. And that so one day I said something funny. And I was always, anyway, saying something funny about uh, the production of people. And then uh, Pat smiled. So I climbed up <laughs> the top of the ladder and said, ladies and gentlemen, Pat smiled. Something happened. So at that moment, Pat laughed because <laughs> he thought I was going very far. But it was, uh, it was okay to work with Pat. It was okay. Unlike Catherine Cass, Sheila Allen was only scheduled to have one dialogue scene with Patrick Magoon, which, on the day, was to prove rather disappointing for her. Well, yes. Yeah. On one of the scenes, Patrick couldn't be there. 
in the afternoon, and it was one of my major dialogue scenes with him. And so this director read Patrick's lines. I mean, he was very good, but it wasn't Patrick, but I had to pretend that it was. So I certainly remember looking at his face with great interest while he held the script off camera and gave me the lines. I don't remember much more than that. Um, all I basically remember is having really nice off-the-set times, just talking with Colin, who is such a, an experienced actor and had done so much. I mean, it was just great fun. Colin Gordon, who played number two in A, B and C, was immediately invited back to take on the same role in the next episode, The General, filming for which started at the beginning of March 1967. However, there was a noticeable change in the way that he played the part the second time around. This is probably because he was not originally intended to play the role, but he did so when an alternative actor was not available. This would explain why, in the general, his number two is much more efficient and confident than the nervous wreck previously seen in A, B and C.